Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is finally time for my year long empties. These are all the things that I used up in 2022, makeup, skincare, hair care, like everything I included in this video. Um, usually I do empties updates like every two months, three months, but I was just curious to see how much I used over the entire year altogether. Kind of go through each product a little bit quicker than I do in a normal empties video. Obviously there's like so many products to talk about, so I don't want to like dwell too much, but I will definitely leave my empties slash declutter playlist down below in case you want like a little bit more detail about all of these products. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, that does help my channel out a lot and helps me know what you guys want to see. So definitely don't forget to do that if you feel called to do so. Um, and let's just get into it because there's so many products. <laughs> All right, so let's start with foundations slash skin tint. Um, I finished three liquid foundations in 2022, one sample packet, two skin tints, and one powder foundation. And this was really good. This is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Foundation, um, self-refreshing, sorry, powder foundation in the shade Linen 220. Really, really good. I enjoyed the coverage and finish of this. It, <clears throat> you can tell it was like a quality product. Like it didn't look too cakey. It didn't offer like 100% full coverage, but it's a powder. So like I didn't expect that, but like it was really, really nice. And I loved how seamless it was. This is a no. This is the uh, Pixi H2O Skin Tint. It's kind of like almost like a gel type of skin Skin tint. Not that I expect like a ton of coverage from a skin tint, but this just wasn't the coverage I was looking for and I don't think it was worth the price. It wasn't like super expensive like Sephora prices, but you know, Pixie's kind of like a little bit of a higher end drugstore pricing and I just don't think it was worth the price. So I'm not getting that again. This um, Shiseido Sync or Skin Soft Refreshing Tint was really good. This was in the shade Medium Matsu 315. Really nice, pretty good coverage for a skin tint, but not super heavy, love that. Both of these I got from Influencer, by the way. I did not purchase those two um, Shiseido products. Um, this is kind of forgettable. I don't know, this was just like a sample. The Neo New Giorgio Armani, nothing to rave about there. Um, the AOA Studio Buildable Satin Foundation. This is in the shade Buff. It was all right. It's a dropper foundation. Um, the coverage is okay. Um, not bad for the price. It was really cheap. It was like under $2, I think, but I just don't care for dropper foundations. So that's a no. And these two are the L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour fresh wear. Really, really did like both of these. Um, this was the shade vanilla, I think. And this, yeah, 445 and this is 455. Both really good. Really, really nice coverage, natural finish. I just didn't like the fragrance towards the end of their life. I kind of started noticing it more and more, but I wouldn't be opposed to getting it again because I know they look good. Um, so yeah, that's the only thing. So I usually have luck with L'Oreal foundations, but I haven't bought any in a while because I kind of want to venture out, so. Foundation is just a staple product for me. I always have foundation and I go through them pretty quick because I don't really keep a lot of them at, at once, so. I used up four concealers in 2022 and I go through concealer pretty pretty regularly. I don't keep a ton of these either, but um, we'll start with this one. This is the Ulta Full Coverage Liquid Concealer. It's not bad. It's, it's very... It's, it's more natural looking for a full coverage concealer. That's what I remember about it. I don't remember it being like super full coverage at all. Um, and it was pretty creamy. So it did go on easily and blend it out easily and all that, but not one that I would repurchase because I don't, it didn't, leave a, it didn't leave an impression on me. So I wouldn't get that again. Um, this was the shade Light Neutral. I always like to say the shade in case maybe people were curious. This one is by JCat Beauty, and this is their Stay Assurance Water Sealed Zero Smudge Concealer. This one I also felt kind of like eh about. It was okay. Um, nothing that wowed me personally. Like a natural concealer for sure, like for certain days, but I noticed too, like, even though I kind of was like, oh, I don't think I like full coverage. I think I'm leaning more that way for some concealers because they're just not offering enough coverage. So another one I probably would never get again. Honestly, just forgot about <laughs> after I emptied it out. Um, these two were my latest ones. These are the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop. These weren't bad at all. Um, they're not as moisturizing as these two were. I don't remember if JCat was as moisturizing. But these are a little bit more mattifying, um, but not super mattifying, not dry drying but yeah and I think these could be built up a little bit more to be a little bit more concealing but again I don't think it was that level of concealing that I think I want now so I might get these again wouldn't be against it but um 
yeah, would definitely be open to trying other ones out. So four concealers I used up last year. All right, so these are all the lip products I used up in 2022. So five lip glosses, one liquid lipstick, and these are more lip balm type of products. So we'll just go real quick. The Clarins Instant Light Lip Perfector. I forgot that I finished this last year, but um, this was really, really nice. Really enjoyed it. Um, I just had it forever in my collection, so I was really happy to finish it up. It was like a really pretty neutral color. It's like not on my radar to repurchase at all, but it was lovely. Um, finished this in a project. This is the Sigma Lip Gloss in the shade Tint, I think it was called. Um, really pretty color, but not really like a winter shade for me, but something I had in my collection forever as well. Was super happy to use that up in a project. Um, really nice formula, but I don't think they make it anymore. The yeah, Truth Bomb Luxe Lip Oil by ColourPop. I didn't really like this that much. It's in a very like pale, neutral type of shade, so I figured it would be fine. And it was okay. I mean, I finished it, but I didn't like the texture of this lip oil. It was the very first lip oil I ever tried. Not really my thing. I don't know. I just don't like lip oils. I think they're too like weirdly slippery or something, but that's a me thing. Super excited to finish up a NYX Butter Gloss in the shade Fortune Cookie. That was fun. I've had this forever. So, yeah, like I like colors like this, but I probably wouldn't get this particular one again just because I'm over it, <laughs> but it's good. Um, good formula. I always like the NYX Butter Glosses. This is the Wet n Wild Glassy Gloss, very much discontinued <laughs> lip gloss. Great product. Yeah, I use this more as a lip treatment and I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't think they make it anymore, of course, but you know, it's a lip gloss. It's not that serious. I'm sure you can find something similar. This is the NYX Lip Lingerie in the shade Push Up. I finished this at the end of last year. Really, really nice color. One of my favorite nudes in my collection. And yeah, glad to get it out because it's super old. And these are the three lip balm type products. I hated this Ilia lip wrap. Um, well, hate's a strong word, but I just did not think this was moisturizing. This was actually the opposite. It made your lips super dry. It's like immediate well, not immediate dryness, but you throw it on and you're like, oh, okay, I guess it's moisturizing my lips, but then your lips are starting to flake and peel off. Not a recommendation. Um, the NARS Lip Glow, I think this is in Laguna. Yeah, this is one of their like free like birthday thingers. Um, really nice. I really enjoyed this product. I don't know if it's just because the component is so nice. It's like shiny, cute, like a little bit bougie, you know, that does add to me liking things, <laughs> um, but it is what it is. And the product itself, I scooped it out. It was moisturizing and it did offer like a little bit of that like brownie tan tint, um, which I really liked on myself. Don't know if I would buy the whole price, but you know what I mean. Um, EOS lip balm, use the heck out of that. Super old, these are good. I enjoy them, but the packaging's a little bulky, not feeling that, but I really like these for putting under um, really dry formula lip products because they're not too slimy. So look at all that, fun. Nine products all together. I only used up one mascara last year, which I think is kind of weird, but um, I guess that's how it worked out. Um, so yeah, I don't follow the three month rule, by the way, I kind of stretch it out as long as the mascara works. Um, this is the Kiko Luxurious Lashes Mascara. This is the extra volume brush. And this was okay. I was looking for a more natural lash mascara, which this was that, but it turns out I don't really like natural lash mascaras. I want something with a little bit more. Um, so this I would not repurchase. So it's good. Um, you can build it up, I guess, but I want something that is a little bit more like oomph from the get-go. And that was not this. For other face products, I used up one face spray, face setting spray. This was the Fix Plus. Um, good product, but not necessary in my collection. Um, so I would, I would repurchase this if that's the kind of thing I'm looking for, but it is expensive and you can get cheaper ones like from e.l.f. and stuff. So I don't think this is worth it <clears throat> for me and the way I use my makeup. I used up one, um, eyeshadow primer last year and this is the e.l.f. sheer eyeshadow primer and this was really, really good. Um, nothing, uh, extraordinary to say here, just that it's a really good budget type of, Primer. I was just excited to finish it up because it's been in my collection forever. I finished up this CoverGirl Simply Ageless Anti-Aging Foundation Primer. Um, I got this free from Influencer. First, I was like, okay, this is kind of just like a moisturizer, moisturizing type of primer. But then as I used it more, I liked it more kind of a thing. But um, ever since I used it up, I really haven't missed it that much. And I prefer more of like, not a silicone type of primer, but something a little bit different than like a moisturizing type of primer. So I wouldn't get this one again, but it was good. 
I finished up one little sample of eyeshadow here. This is the only eyeshadow I finished in 2022. I didn't really have a goal of finishing up any eyeshadows, so this is pretty cool um, <laughs> that I even finished one at all. So this is a sample uh, back pigment, and there wasn't a ton in here, but for me, it takes forever to use eyeshadows, period. Um, I got it off eBay. That's why it's like in this random container. And rose isn't really a color that I gravitate towards for eyeshadow, or it wasn't. Turns out I do like rose. Glad I finished it up so I can boot it out. So that was exciting and unexpected for the end of 2022. It was so long since I've used this thing. This is the Elme um, Intense Eye Color Liquid Liner, shade um, Raisin Quartz, not a repurchase, but it was, you know, a nice like basic eyeliner to use. It definitely was not this color. It was a lot lighter than that, but it still offered definition. So it was really nice, but like I'm not drawn to buy Elme eyeliners anymore. Like I just don't have that calling so it's like out of sight out of mind type of thing i finished up this clear brow gel by anastasia beverly hills it is really really good product but i don't think i want to pay abh prices for a clear brow gel i'm just as happy with the elf one that i have right now so nice sturdy shiny packaging and the product in itself performed really well but yeah not something i would repurchase again at that price point because i just don't care about it that much it, you know Cheaper things do the job as well. I finished up two fragrances. I finished up At the Beach by Bath and Body Works and Falling in Love by Philosophy. Both had very little left in it, so they were gimmies this year, but I did want to move them out. This is my favorite beach scent. Good price point, but I don't need a fragrance that smells like this right now. I have the body spray, so that's fine. And then this one is Falling in Love, which was also a really lovely scent. I just don't really wear fragrances like this anymore. I don't know if blueberries and cream is like the proper way to describe this, but kind of on that line. It's a little bit fruity, a little bit soft, loved it, but yeah, not something I'd wear today. But excited to move two of these out in 2022. Now we're going to move into the non-makeup products and we're gonna start off with these, I guess you could say like health products slash skincare if you wanna call it that. Um, I used up two collagen peptide powders. Um, more towards the beginning of 2022, I decided to not get any more of them because we're like at 20 bucks around. Um, give or take, you know, per container. And that's a lot to re-up like every other month. I mean, the main reason I got these was for my joints because they were bothering me, but I also, you know, wanted to see the side effects, like the beauty side effects of it. And I didn't really notice a ton. Um, so yeah, it just wasn't worth it to repurchase, but I did enjoy them when I had them. Like they're both flavorless, whatever. I didn't have any problems with these, but I got two of those and stopped buying those. I used up three shampoos last year. So this is Love Beauty and Planet, the Miro Miro Butter and Rose Blooming Color Shampoo. This was just okay. I think for a drugstore sulfate-free shampoo, it's not bad. So like for the price point, it's fine. It did have like that kind of like toy perfume kind of smell. Um, this is the Aveeno Apple Cider Vinegar Blend Shampoo, also sulfate-free and free of all this other stuff, dyes, parabens, etc. cetera. Um, I would not get this again. It wasn't bad, but I just don't care for the smell of Apple Cider Vinegar that much and like it just was whatever so again another like eh like drugstore um product with no sulfates um but this is the l'oreal ever pure sulfate free frizz de fa shampoo i had gotten this like a bunch of times in the past and i really like this one i don't know what it is i don't know if it just feels a little bit more substantial than these other two but i just feel my hair likes it i guess so i recommend this more for the drugstore thing it's a little bit pricier maybe than these two but i like it better i finished up two conditioners last year this is the one that goes with the shampoo okay wouldn't get it it's just like average drugstore conditioner um and a hair mask type of thing from a dye box of hair dye which i always have these on hand and finished one of these up pretty good yeah nothing spectacular there but yeah got through two i finished up one deodorant last year and whatever it was good i'm not super picky with deodorants but i'm kind of leaning more towards the non-aluminum free ones like the regular type of deodorant just i don't know i feel like the aluminum free ones are starting to get a little they're not offering as much protection for me against sweat <laughs> as i would like these days um which wasn't always the case, but yeah, that's kind of my preferences these days. So we're probably gonna steer away from aluminum free. This is a regular one though, not aluminum free. But yeah, Dove is fine, whatever. I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about these, but me and my kids use these. I use this for makeup remover though. So this is a cheap version of the baby shampoo slash baby wash. And I've always used these, they're very inexpensive. Um, yeah, got through two of these. One is from CVS, one is from Aldi's. So I'm just gonna go to Aldi's from now on because they are the 
least expensive. I finished up one face cleanser. I don't really use face wash as much. This is the e.l.f. Super Clarify. Um, if I'm in the shower, I'll use it, sure. So this was a good product. I just did not like the packaging of this. So um, the mouth is too wide and product kind of tends to pour out of it. And I don't like the twist off cap, just a preference thing. So I wouldn't get it for that reason. That's a pretty big reason for me because, you know, I only want one and if it, it, it needs to do the job like all around. So, but it wasn't expensive and the cleanser itself was fine. Not stripping. If you're like picky about packaging and you don't like things pouring out, you might not want this one. I finished up one eye makeup remover, which I never really use these. I just had this forever and was very intentional at finishing it because it was in my collection for years. Um, really, really nice product. Definitely gentle, does the job. I just don't need it because I use makeup removing face wash. So it kind of is an extra product I don't need. These Scentsy things, I've had like so many of these guys. These are like Scentsy wax melts. Um, I have not ordered any in a while, like a couple years, because I just had a bunch of these built up. So I'm glad to have moved one of these out and want to finish the other ones, but I just haven't been good about using scent at all. Like I don't use candles, I don't use like wax melts or anything as much as I used to in the past, so it just takes me forever to get through them, but I did use up one. For face moisturizers, I used up four, and I also used up one eye cream last year. So um, these are my go-tos, and I'll probably continue to repurchase CeraVe because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I tried to stray away from CeraVe and it didn't, serve me well so i'm just gonna stick with these these two are very similar but one is ultra lightweight both good so actually what well, this might be really nice in the winter time if you have really dry skin and then for the summer maybe i don't know but these are really really good definitely we purchased that i used up the inky list peptide moisturizer which was good i thought this was nice but i didn't wasn't crazy about the packaging i thought it was like a little too much so again with the packaging like that's a real thing for me if i don't like the packaging um it will make me not want to buy it again so i'm not really you know, a skincare aficionado, but I tried the Drunk Elephant Polypeptide Cream. It's like, to me, they felt very similar. I noticed they had kind of a similar texture, so this was a good dupe for that. I just, yeah, don't need all that. Um, so they got a little bit slimmer packaging, but it was a good product. And then I had this Tea Tree Anti-Imperfection Night Mask. This is by The Body Shop. This was good. I don't think super necessary, though. I would have breakouts, and I would use this, and it was fine, um, but wouldn't purchase it again. I haven't missed it. I just like, buy the little bottle of Tea Tree oil and then one eye cream this is by the brand okay um korean brand it was all right um definitely fragrance though and didn't really do a whole lot for my eyes i don't love fragrance i realized this year or last year or whatever um i don't love that on my face so yeah not a repurchase these are all of the toners and treatments that I used up this year. So I only actually used up one toner. This is the Mario Badescu Glycolic Acid Toner. Um, this was good, but I don't think I would get it again. I don't think it did anything exceptional for my skin, but I do like to have a toner, I realized, um, in my collection. So I ended up going with a different brand. Um, I used up one tea tree oil that I use for breakouts. They kind of help with, like, if you have a painful, like cystic type of acne thing going on good product i bought another one used up one retinol product um this was good but nothing that blew my mind didn't really notice a ton of difference i'm going to go back to the ordinary on this one and i used up these invisible acne patches eh, they're okay um i was curious about how patches worked and if they were any better than anything else i've tried this was a little too sticky um which i guess is good you know it stays on your face but when you rip it off it's a little much so that i noticed a couple times so i wouldn't get this again but it was cheap it was from shop miss a but yeah not really a big deal to me like I only have one in each category for each one of these, so. But yeah, excited to push these out because I like simplifying my skincare as much as possible. For body moisturizers, I use two full-size lotions, two hand creams, two smaller-sized lotions, like sample sizes, and three body oils. So the Nivea one with cocoa butter is actually pretty good. Um, I didn't notice like intense, intense hydration. I think it was moisturizing enough, um, but decent. Again, Nivea is a decent brand. Um, then I used up the CVS Skin Relief Cream. This is the 2% colloidal oatmeal. I really like this and I think the price is right, especially with coupons from the drugstore. So right now I have a first right now I have a first aid beauty one. Honestly, you don't need to pay first aid beauty prices, I don't think. I think something like this is fine. I'm not saying they're exactly the same, but the idea is there, so I would just go with this next time. But it was nice to kind of change it up. But yeah, drugstore for that. <laughs> don't need to do anything more. Two Codaly hand creams, and these are good. 
Um, like these, enjoy these. They are not greasy at all. They are heavily fragranced though. So just giving you a heads up if you're not into that. But the fragrance does kind of fade. So it doesn't like last super long on your hands, which is good because I don't want to smell super strong fragrance on my hands. I probably wouldn't get them again because I think that's fine. I tried them. Tried and conquered. We're good to go. Um, this is a sample of the Brazilian Bum Bum Cream. Boom Boom Cream, sorry. Um, and I... Yeah, it was good. I liked it. I don't think I like love the scent as much as other people might love it. It's okay. Like I know people are obsessed, but I'm not obsessed. It was just a nice moisturizer and nice to try because I was curious about it. Sample from the Hershey Lodge. <laughs> We went to Hershey Park and I decided I wanted to finish up both of these because they're too chocolatey scented. I'm not going to waste time about it. Finished it. Smells like chocolate. Not my thing, but I'm glad it's out of my life. And then three body oils. Um, so this is Bellaterra oils. Don't get that brand. It went bad on me too quickly. Um, but this brand is good. This is the Ancient Greek Remedy one. Um, so yeah, I'm giving oils a break for a little bit, but I do love using these on my body and my face. I usually use these on, at night on my face. So used up three bottles of those, which is crazy. But yeah, that's how much I use. Use. that's how much I used. I finished up three nail products, um, not nail polishes. Well, this one's a nail polish, so I'll, I'll start with this. Um, so this is the Sage Beat Dry Fast Top Coat, my favorite brand for this. This is a regular in my stash. I finished a Sally Hansen Instant Cuticle Remover, really good for softening your cuticles. You could also run your hands under warm water. That is also a cheaper way, but sometimes I don't want to do that. So there you go. Great product. And then we have the Beauty 360 Strengthening Nail Polish Remover for Nails. This is not the 100% acetone one, I don't think. Yeah, I decided I need 100% acetone when I do my nails because it's just like so much quicker. These take forever to take your nail polish off or a lot longer. So not my thing, but I, I wanted to take a break from acetone because I didn't know if it was like messing with my nails, but it doesn't. So we're just going to go back to 100% acetone. For hair products, I used up four styling products. I used up two of these L'Oreal uh, root cover-ups. And I'm super excited whenever I have a hair empty because my hair category was always a little bit too high and just thrilled whenever I finish anything. But real quick, um, the Super Comb uh, Lumiere or Lumiere Prep and Protect uh, spray. This was really, really good. One of my friends, uh, BoxyCharm or Ipsy Reject products that she gave to me did the job. I enjoyed it. Um, I think I remember saying I would have bought the full size of this, uh, but I haven't needed to. So <laughs> me, I just remember that this was good. Uh, so I, I don't know why I liked it so much, but I did. That's pretty sad. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. This I really enjoyed. Um, it did make my hair look nice when I do blowouts, I guess. But I haven't really needed this or been searching for a blowout bomb right now. I don't really need one, but this was a good one. This I'm so happy to get out. This was the <laughs> Nourishing Coconut Milk by Organics. I had this thing forever. I didn't really enjoy this too much. So in terms of the purpose, this is supposed to be an anti-breakage serum, but I think it was just too greasy and oily and just like not that great. But it was okay mixing it with other stuff, I guess, but didn't do anything. Added zero value to my collection. And this is a really old Tresemme Flawless Curls Curl Hydration Cream. Really nice. You know, I actually used this you know, after my shower just to like get some moisture into my hair. So this wasn't bad for that. I just use other products now. That's really all there is to it. But I do like having a product like this in my collection just to add something back into my hair after a shower. So this served that purpose, but we needed to kick that out because it was so old and I'm just sick of looking at it. So happy with those. And these two, of course, um, I've talked about before. I've been getting these regularly because I have more grays now and just... Yeah, so I cycled through two of these last year and we'll see how many I end up using this year, but this has kind of become, unfortunately, an essential in my collection um, and it works pretty well. And I hope to have at least this many empties with hair care next year because that category was a little out of hand, but it's a lot better now, so. This is sort of an empty, but I finished using these two uh, Yao Twins. This is the brand off Amazon, uh, beauty sponges. I really love sponges and these were like a good amount of bounciness. Like they're not super stiff, um, but not too soft in my opinion. They're great quality. So I would be open to buying more of these eventually, but right now I'm just using my brushes. I'm really excited about all the things I used up and it was really fun to like revisit products I haven't seen in a while. So that was definitely fun. I'm definitely going to do this again for this upcoming year. I'd like to have at least two years of this under my belt so I can see things. Have a great week. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.